What's up everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we have some friends of ours coming down from Redemptive Love Farms and they are going to shear some llamas that we just got in. Uh, we were recently at an exotic sale and we bought 11 llamas and every one of them needed to be sheared because as you can see behind me, it is turning green, it is turning warm. Springtime has finally arrived. So we wanna get all the extra hair off of these llamas and Redemptive Love are the people that we trust to get that done. We've had so many new animals arrive at the farm this last week. Um, when we go to an exotic sale, especially out of state, we buy as much as we can possibly fit on the trailer to make the trip worth it. And so we've got yaks, we've got new camels, we've got new cows, we've got a little bit of everything, but the llamas are the ones who are in need of help right now. Back when we first started doing the farm, we had some llamas that needed shearing and I thought to myself, how hard can it be? So we went and we bought some clippers and some blades and it was not fun. It was, I mean, it can be done, but they like to spit, they like to scream. Uh, you go through a whole lot of blades if you don't know what you're doing. And so I decided several years ago that I will gladly pay whatever the cost is for someone else to shear the llamas. So these guys are professionals at it. They have a lot of top-notch, like really high quality llamas that they raise, um, extremely imprinted, very people friendly. And so they know exactly what they're doing. They are llama pros. Uh, they are also here for a second reason. They are coming to pick up a rescue camel that we actually got in as well. Um, they have camels and their farm is a farm and it's a rescue both. So they're gonna take this camel that has some um, dropped ankles uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more later on, but they are going to take him back to their farm and he will live there forever. Here we are up here in the catch pen. So we've got all of the new guys up in here, all the new calves, yaks. But these are all the llamas here who are in question and needing some trimming. Uh, Shannon just, oh boy, what a face. What are you doing? Shannon just messaged me and actually gave me options of haircuts. Apparently you can get the lion cut, the full nude cut, all these different cuts that should give us options of. So we'll look at some of that as the day progresses too. But these guys just need to get all of this hair cut off all the way around. We've got two different kind of llamas here. These are, it's to do with their coat. These are Surrey llamas. And you can see their coat is a longer, more kind of curly hair. And then you've got the, waka, the Wakaya llamas, which would be more like this guy, more of a fluffy fool type hair. Out of this entire group, these are two males. Every other llama in here is a female. And this is a first for us, yaks. We've never had yaks before, but we had a customer request some yaks. And so we picked those up for them this week. These are both females. This is a royal yak. She's got the multi-colors. And then we have a black yak back there. Both of these are female and they are supposed to be bred. These are super cool dudes. They are taking a little bit of time adjusting to Florida as it's considerably hotter than where they're from but really, really neat animals. Everybody still has their sale sticker on, but I didn't really think it was necessary to pull that off because we're gonna be shearing off the hair anyway. So we'll just do that all at the same time. Okay, here is the first llama. We just, every single cow got out. So we chased all those back. And this is the first llama getting started. This guy has his new haircut. He is not halter broken. That was not exactly fun, but this lady seems to be very halter broken, standing nice, so hopefully this one goes a little bit easier. actually likes doing this. I don't understand that at all. <laughs> no, thank you. All right, we're gonna take the wildest llama here and let her catch it. Oh yeah, oh. I don't know if that one was wild enough. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
That's it. <laughs> yeah, she's just, she's just good at it. That's all. All I know is I'm glad it's not Logan and I doing this. Woohoo! She's too short to get a hold of it. <laughs> She's only got like a foot and a half on you. All right, the official worst llama. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Every llama has done so good except for this one. <laughs> that sound is lovely. And I know you can't smell on video, but if you could smell that spit, that is rough. Rough, rough, rough. But she is still going at it. Doesn't give up. I would already gave up by now. This camel has dropped pasterns. His back angles, as you can see, are a little flat. And so that's why they're taking him. And while they're here, we did pick up a bottle baby camel at one of the exotic sales. And he is very weak and pitiful. And so Shannon, her vet, uh, does a lot of really good work with bottle baby camels. And so she is going to take that camel up to the vet. So we're going to do a little joint venture to get this guy back to health. Um, it's nothing that anybody here did or anything. Uh, we think that he was probably pulled maybe the day old and didn't get his colostrum and stuff. So they're going to take him and get some plasma and a few different things. So we will probably see him again in a few weeks. And they're supposed to be a little weak, like the day they're born, but they're not supposed to look like this and walk like this a week afterwards. So hopefully he gets all healed up. Long hair. <laughs> All right, that was a fun day. Fun for me. I pretty much watched most of the time. They did an awesome job taking care of all those llamas for us. I would not want to do that myself. It is not enjoyable. They're covered in spit and they are covered in hair and they're sweating to death. So it's not something I would want to do. So I'm glad that they were able to handle that for us. They did take the um, large gelding camel um, with the fallen ankles. And so they'll take care of him. He has a forever home there at their farm. Um, I'm going to put a link to their farm down in the description. And they have a farm and a rescue. They do both of those things. They do petting zoos. They do traveling zoos. They do all kinds of stuff. So really a great family and a great farm for you to follow on Facebook. And as far as the little camel goes, like I said, we did buy him at an exotic sale. And when we bought him, Logan and I both said he looks really weak and really pitiful. Um, but we've not had experience with a camel um, that young. So they said he was about a month old. But based on just talking with Shannon and stuff, we think he's probably more like maybe a week and a half. 
And so he probably didn't get the colostrum he needs. He's just had a really rough start to life. And so, like I said, she's going to take him to her vet because they're very experienced in camelids, llamas, alpacas, camels, all those guys. And so they're going to take him there and I believe probably get a plasma transfer um, if they didn't get their colostrum in the beginning. Shan was just telling me that the plasma transfer will help with that a lot. So he's going to get some tests done. He's going to get some medical attention and he's going to spend probably about two weeks there at Redemptive Love and they're going to feed him and take care of him. And then he'll probably come back here after that. So he will be looking for a new home uh, when all that is said and done, but we want to make sure that he is good and healthy. We don't want to sell any animal that's questionable or it's going to cause more work for the customer. So they're going to take care of that and hopefully we will see him back here in a few weeks. And you can follow his story, I'm sure, on Redemptive Love's um, Facebook page. I'm sure that they're going to have updates on him on there. So make sure you check that out.